I think we're good to go for the for the next session um, with Nathan Forrester and Sanda Sandu um, on the topic of trust and safety. Uh, I'm 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 glad that uh, that you guys approached us because I think we're going to hear some 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 good things that might help uh, the project. The title of the session is Wrongs and Rights: Disinformation and Human Rights Across Wiki Projects. Uh, okay, Nathan and Sanda. Floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, very nice to be with everyone uh, this morning. Apologies if I sound a little bit croaky. It's a little bit early for me in the morning. Um, so we we envis envision this this panel um, as an opportunity for us to explain a little bit about two new units that have been set up at the foundation. So that's the disinformation unit um, of which I'm a part and the human rights unit of which Sander is a part. So um, I'm gonna speak for 10 to 15 minutes um, as is Sander. And then we want to give um, a good opportunity for everyone to, to ask some questions if they would like to. Um, so I will kick off. Um, I'm gonna be talking about disinformation at Wikimedia or across Wikimedia projects. So first of all, um, we, can, we can acknowledge that disinformation is a growing problem around the world. Um, and across Wikimedia projects, we are not immune to disinformation campaigns. So first of all, I want to start by posing a few questions. So first of all, what is disinformation? Why is disinformation different on Wikipedia? What can Wikipedia volunteers do to protect their communities, their content, and to tackle disinformation? And how can the foundation help you to do all of these things? So to give a little bit of um, background, first, we need to acknowledge a few things. The first thing is that disinformation is not a new phenomenon. False information campaigns have been used during pandemics, wars, elections, and indeed in peacetime for hundreds of years. In 1646, Thomas Brown, a physician and philosopher, published a book called Pseudodoxia Epidemica, which was about the vulgar errands, errors sorry, and superstitions of the age. So you can see that this is an incredibly old problem that we're dealing with. But the way that we look at this problem has changed over the years. So in recent years, there's been a shift in academic studies from a focus on propaganda. Um, so there were fields uh, like propaganda studies to a focus on disinformation studies. So in 1937, a canonical example of this, scholars in the US founded the Institute for Propaganda Analysis. This institute sought to help the public understand um, and analyze what its members called at the time the distortion of public opinion. Now the term disinformation is more broadly and more recently commonly thought to have been anglicized from the Russian disinformation. This term emerged in the early years of the Cold War and meant to sow falsehoods among one's enemies. Now, of course, disinformation studies emerged as an academic discipline most recently in the immediate aftermath of the 2016 US presidential election. And we can have a few uh, chuckles with one another about why such a, um, why such a change happened. Um, so one thing to say in, for certain is that elections are one of the most important areas that disinformation targets. So disinformation campaigns can perhaps alter the outcome of elections or undermine democratic processes. So I've just provided a little map here with um, areas where technology has disrupted election integrity. So one thing I do want to clarify before we go forward is the differences between misinformation, a commonly um, held term, um, a commonly used term, and disinformation, what we're talking about here. So um, there are a couple of rough definitions that I want to give. First of all, misinformation being the sharing of false or misleading information, regardless of intention to mislead. Whereas disinformation is the sharing of equally false or misleading information, but with the intention to mislead. Now, intent is often impossible to prove. 
So social media platforms often use the term disinformation only when there is proof of disinformation tactics being used. So these might be bot accounts and some kind of astroturfing um, and some kind of influence campaign. Now, at the foundation, we focus only on disinformation. This is because misinformation is primarily a content problem, whereas disinformation is a behavior problem. So the foundation, because it never changes content, focuses purely on disinformation. However, when the behavior of certain editors threatens the safety of other editors, keeps false information on the Wikimedia platforms, or stops the Wikimedia projects from functioning properly, then the foundation has a responsibility to investigate. So a couple of examples of the differences between misinformation and disinformation, we have the same statement here. The president sells drugs. One of them is an individual post on a Facebook page alleging something that they believe about the president. That's a good example of misinformation. A good example of disinformation would be a group who funds the opposition party and want the president to lose, making the same, uh, the same claim um, through thousands of bot accounts. So we might think about how sock puppets are frequently used across Wikimedia platforms. Um, this is just another example from the medical misinformation sphere. Um, this is a particular problem um, at the moment across different social media platforms. And the aims of disinformation vary. So they can be anything from interfering in an election. They can be um, what we call historical negationism, different from historical revisionism, which can be a, a valid academic practice. Historical negationism is the denial of large events um, throughout history um, in order to usually to support a present day political view. Uh, the suppression of verifiable knowledge about notable but marginal communities. So this is a particular area of interest for us across Wikimedia projects. Astroturfing. So to describe what astroturfing is, it's the astroturf is a kind of fake grass. So it's a kind of metaphor for uh, bot accounts that uh, want to uh, present, a, present a view as if it's a grassroots campaign, but in fact, it's several bot accounts through different paid networks pushing a specific point of view. Medical disinformation, this is usually done with financial gain um, in mind, and of course, foreign influence campaigns. So how does disinformation affect Wikipedia specifically? Well, when working on disinformation, we have to ask ourselves, ask ourselves lots of difficult questions questions such as if disinformation is false information then how do we decide how do we decide what the truth is well we don't really deal with truth so much across wikimedia platforms we deal with verifiability what is a reliable source we always search for the best possible sources for our information but how can we truly verify that this source is reliable then who has the power to decide what's true um, who has the power also to decide what's verifiable? When does disinformation become harmful? As in, when does it get to a level where it can really badly affect the society in which it is uh, consumed? And how do we make sure information is reliable without being biased? So this is something we're all guilty of. We all push a certain point of view, believing that we're completely correct. And of course, we all have our own biases. Now, of course, over the years, we've come up with guidelines to, to answer these questions. Um, we have um, guidelines around verifiability, around neutral point of view, around no original research. But it does, th those guidelines don't stop disinformation from being dangerous to Wikimedia. We are, of course, the largest collection of free collaborative knowledge in human history. Millions of people from around the world written, added to Wikipedia in, in particular since it was created. And millions of people, moreover, look at Wikimedia projects as reliable so sources of knowledge. People really believe what they, what they read here. So 
disinformation directly undermines everything that editors have worked so hard to build across Wikimedia projects. It, in, it endangers the wikis um, and articles covering topics such as election processes, politics, history, medicine, but not only. There are far more topics than that that can be hit by a disinformation campaign. And really in the wrong hands, Wikipedia could be a powerful tool in spreading disinformation. So why is it different um, specifically on Wikipedia as opposed to um, social media platforms where we see lots and lots, um, as we've seen in the news very recently, lots and lots of um, problems. So first of all, the community, there is a vested interest um, in Wikipedia and in related projects to stop disinformation mani manifesting on the platform. The platform itself is interesting insofar as rather than having just thousands of individual opinions on a single topic, Wikipedia articles aim to achieve community consensus based on the best verifiable sources and methods. So rather than using technology like bot accounts, Disinformation spreaders on Wikipedia are more likely to protect pages in their versions and block other users. And this is very easy to spot. However, because of these three things also, um, there are challenges on Wikimedia platforms. From a commu community perspective, anyone, anywhere can edit anonymously. That's a real challenge. On the platform side, the sheer quantity of data makes it difficult to find, to discover, to think about disinformation as a, as a, as a whole narrative. And um, that's a real challenge as well. And in terms of guidelines, we have these guidelines to fight against, help fight against disinformation. Um, but there are vast differences in local rules across wiki projects. So the types of behaviours that we might come across when we come across a disinformation narrative um, include biased sources, so sources which heavily skew in favour of a certain political or social group, fictional sources, so ones that are entirely fabricated, claims without sources um, are quite a common way in which disinformation manifests on Wikimedia platforms. Negationist language, so what I mean by this is undermining um, existing historical realities or simply deleting um, verifiable information. Sock puppetry is an important one. Um, I won't say too much about this because I'm sure there are many people in the room today who know far more about sock puppetry than I do. Um, Undisclosed paid editing is always a challenge and where that crosses over with disinformation is a particular problem. Um, if a state is attempting to pay people to edit something in a certain way, that can be extremely harmful for, for the platform and for users. Um, we also see false claims, rule violations, um, commonly used um, to protect disinformation narratives after they've been added. And the worst case scenario really is project capture. So when a, when a project is, is captured by um, a specific group trying to push a certain agenda. Um, I won't say too much about how disinformation differs from regular vandalism, um, but the, the main point here is that disinformation has a clear aim of distorting knowledge about a subject. So this could be removing information, could be removing entire articles, or it could be inserting unreliable sources to support false claims. It could also involve protecting pages, um, or bad faith actors can also work together to ban users who um, try to correct disinformation narratives. Of course, reliable sources are our big weapon against this. Wikipedia relies on sources to make sure that knowledge is verifiable. This means that often in a disinformation investigation, checking the sources can be the first and most important thing to do. And rules on verifiability state that questionable sources, circular sources or self-published sources shouldn't really be used. Um, I won't uh, bore you by reading this quote out, um, 
I'm sure you can um, read it for yourselves, but I really want to underline the point that reliable sources are the backbone of uh, Wikipedia editing. So why am I talking about this? What is the role of the foundation here? So the first thing that I want to assure everyone is just because the foundation is researching disinformation does not mean that it will be changing content. The community continues to maintain its editorial role over all Wikipedia content. And the foundation will always work alongside the community on any disinformation issues related to content. So it's normal that differences in viewpoint exist. In fact, I think these differences are one of the, the many things that help produce really high quality encyclopedic content. Um, researching disinformation does not mean that one community or one set of political beliefs should stop others from being represented. So how can the foundation help with disinformation issues? Well, first we can help to identify disinformation on Wikipedia. Um, Secondly, we can run investigations into user behaviour or potential instances where projects um, seem to have been captured by a certain um, point of view pushing group. Uh, we can help monitor article, articles during election cycles. So elections are really useful places where the foundation can help because it's, it's a really discrete event where we can monitor pages very specifically. Um, that the community doesn't have enough resources to monitor. We can provide training on disinformation and how it differs from regular vandalism. Um, and we, of course, have an option to help banning high-risk accounts in cases where it's not safe for community members to do this themselves through local community um, functions. And finally, we can help with dealing with press communications if anything like that came up. So when will we investigate this information? Well, when the false information is severely harmful, for example, either to um, public health or an election. Um, the examples here, are, they kind of speak for themselves, so I, I won't go into too much detail. So if one can prove a pattern of behaviour by a user or a group of users, um, which shows real intent to hide or distort reliable knowledge, uh, when a group of editors has successfully stopped other editors from, from correcting false information on Wikipedia. So this is about power imbalance, really, um, and the use of uh, administrative rights. And where there is evidence of editors collaborating or coordinating to keep disinformation on Wikipedia or to remove verifiable and notable information from the platform. So there are previous examples of where we've looked into disinformation um, and there are reports that are publicly available. Um, if anyone would like um, a link to them, I can drop it in the chat at some point. Um, and yeah, that's me on the, on the disinformation front, just to note that we do, uh, the disinformation unit does sit within the trust and safety team, which can help with a range of different issues. Um, so these are anything from emergencies, um, so really harmful stuff, repeated harassment, but now also disinformation. A note here that contacting the foundation should be um, a secondary action after all other mechanisms have been exhausted. So things like going to a local ARBCOM, um, if they exist, um, or um, things that can't be handled by, um, by editors um, and admins, the foundation can, foundation can help with these things. Um, and then I have a couple of notes about office actions. So this is the kind of um, thing that can be uh, implemented should disinformation narratives be extremely harmful um, to users or to the platform itself. So primary office actions include global bans and event bans. Um, secondary office actions include conduct warnings. But really, office actions are incredibly rarely used. The most common office actions are global bans and conduct warnings. But in general, the foundation is extremely reticent to, to, to use these and we do so with a, with a kind of heavy heart. Um, so that's my kind of broad introduction to um, disinformation. Um, I'll welcome some questions um, a, a little bit later on. 
Um, so p- please keep them in the bag for now. And um, if you would like to get in contact with me about any any issue related to this or a- any trust and safety issue more broadly, my email is up on the screen now. Um, or you can email CA app, which is the, the broader trust and safety email address. But what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Sandra for the second half of this panel. Um, and after Sandra's spoken, um, we can return to some some questions after that. So do make a note of them because I'm, I'm interested to hear your questions. Thank you very much. Good morning. Dobre utra. Um, it is my pleasure to be here today uh, with you and discuss about um, important topics for Wikimedia Foundation, including disinformation and human rights. And today, my presentation will focus a little bit more about the human rights approaches and lenses at the Wikimedia uh, Foundation. And just to ensure a smooth connection, I will turn off my video. As far as I know, it doesn't have major impact because it's all processed via Zoom. Yes, but uh, I think I have unstable, unstable internet connection. And just to make sure, I will uh, turn it off. Yeah, thank you. So in Wikimedia projects, we want to emphasize human rights lenses, which includes the promotion and defending universal rights and freedoms, both in the physical and in the digital space. And at the Wikimedia Foundation and movement, uh, it aims to ensure that everyone and everywhere can freely and safely share in the sum of free knowledge. And in a world as connected as ours, uh, there is a need to control information and sway narratives. And that led to people in power, in government or otherwise, to great lengths to push their agendas and hinder fundamental human rights. And this is why we are here today also discussing about pressing human rights issues. It is also important to notice um, and to mention that all the activities that are done in terms of human rights, they are included in a powerful framework of uh, international human rights norms, including the International Bill of Human Rights and the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights that offer a global and broadly accepted standards of values to inform Wikimedia's approach to surfacing and mitigating human rights risks uh, on the platform. It is also, um, worth mentioning that human rights cannot be granted or taken away. Uh, The enjoyment of one's rights affect the enjoyment of others. And as such, they all must be respected. This presentation will also draw attention to the integration of human rights-based approaches in Wikimedia's free knowledge projects and uh, will help to advance the realization of multiple human rights, including the right to free expression, access to information, and the right to be treated with dignity and also access to education. I think through this meeting and this presentation, we also want to attempt to open up space for our community members to join in and discuss the challenges posed to human rights and how we can all better enter the prevention, protection and promotion of human rights in digital environments and on Wikimedia projects. In this graph, you can see that the CE region is fragile in terms of defending human rights. And one of our objectives uh, is to work together with civil rights or- organizations and civil society organizations and to establish partnerships with um, human rights activists and defenders. It's also important for us to mention that human rights transition uh, from the physical to the digital space. And through our work, we have to understand the technical policy and legal infrastructure that are affecting human rights in the digital sphere. And it's also important to uh, ensure that all human rights are upheld in a world where boundaries between the digital and physical space are increasingly blurred. In this context, um, in the latest period of time, um, 
civil society organizations and international organizations are discussing a lot about creating an universal declaration of digital rights. And here in this image, you can see some of the main rights that are being discussed and that are important to approach them, including freedom from discrimination in the digital space, uh, the right to privacy, political participation, because everyone has the right to participate in the information society and to access, regardless of their geographical location, universally available internet services and digital technology at an affordable price. And also everyone has the right to receive uh, the flow of transboundary internet traffic. So therefore, there should be no discrimination in the treatment of internet data or access to edu educational platforms uh, with a sum of all knowledge, for example, like the uh, Wikipedia. In this context, because the human rights risks are increasingly um, challenging, at the Wikimedia Foundation was created the human rights team. And our main objective is to uh, promote human rights at Wikimedia. And we are a group of dedicated human rights defenders that are located in the legal department. And we are working towards mitigating risks and threats to individual contributors and groups supporting the foundation's vision. Um, to imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. What we also try to do, and one of our aim is to find a balance between upholding freedom of expression, but also making sure that the human rights of our valid community are respected. One of our main objectives and main activities that we want to do at the human rights team, which is actually a very new um, unit created in the Wikimedia Foundation, we have just a few months, but one of our main objectives is to build a network of allied individuals and organizations from around the world. We also want to um, sh develop shared human rights awareness tools, including trainings, workshops that will be focused especially on human rights or on the digital rights and entering the security of our community members. And what we want to do is also to support the community members when their human rights are infringed upon and in the course of their good faith contributions to the movement and its projects. And one of our objectives also through this meeting and discussion today is um, to establish a cooperation with you and also to find out if there are some topics that will be interest for you and maybe we can create uh, peer human rights groups in our, um, in the CE region. Taking into consideration that Wikimedia's free knowledge project helps advance the realization of multiple human rights, including the right to free expression and to impart and access to information. At the same time, Wikimedia's project pose a series of high risks that are related um, especially to the following rights, the right to security of persons, access to information, um, the right to be free from unlawful attacks on one's honor and reputation. And in regards to Wikimedia's project, we identified five main human rights risks, including um, harassment, especially harassment of minority voices on Wikimedia project, gendered attacks on volunteers, and also doxing of personal information and threats of violence. Another risk that was identified is harmful contact, uh, content and attacks on individuals. And here should be mentioned that for a harmful content to be cons considered a potential infringement on human rights, it must limit the ability for people to access information, to be free from defamation or to enter their security. Another risk that was identified is the government surveillance and censorship. And here we have to mention the project capture when, when there are serious concerns regarding the potential spread of government sponsored or nationalist leaning disinformation across the free knowledge projects. And some other risks are uh, risks to child rights and limitation on knowledge equity. And today in our presentation, because we don't really have a lot of time, we will focus on three main human rights, um, including harmful content, harassment, and government surveillance and censorship. 
In terms of harmful content, uh, Wikimedia's free knowledge projects allow anyone sharing its vision to participate in its effort to share in the sum of knowledge. But harmful content or actions could infringe on human rights, and these forms can go from the micro attacks on single places to the macro in terms of capture of full projects. Harmful content, uh, they can infringe human rights, especially the right to security of a person, access to information, um, the right to be free from unlawful attacks on one's our honor and reputation, and also the right to truth. And we analyzed information in terms of harmful content, and it was um, it was identified that it's actually present in terms of attacks on individuals profiled including vandalism of biographies of living persons, doxing and spreading hate speech. And also it can be manifested for, through misrepresentation of historical facts, including hosting conspiracy theories, whitewashing, unreliable sources and sock puppeting. It also can be manifested through project capture, involved the potential spread of government sponsored um, disinformation and also dangerous content, uh, including content that can contribute to self-harm and harm to others. It's, and these risks are especially salient on Wikipedia, given its efforts to provide encyclopedic knowledge and the degree to which these projects are used globally. So whenever the content is being edited, should be taken into consideration this kind of risks including the harmful content. The next risk uh, is harassment, and it can take many forms. It can include annoying or rude comments made by volunteers. It can also include gender attacks on volunteers, doxing of personal information, as well as threats of violence. At its most fundamental level, online harassment can impact on the right to be treated with dignity, through the degree of harm depends both on the type and scale of the harassment. And um, harassment, it can impact the right to be treated with dignity, but also the right to non-discrimination, the security of persons, the privacy expression, the right to assembly, and also the right to participate in cultural life. Harassment within the volunteer community um, has been manifested predominantly through and the harassment of minority voices on Wikimedia knowledge projects, including abusive speech, doxing, defamation, and blackmailing. Another type of uh, risks uh, that we want to present today represents the government surveillance and censorship. As human rights are being challenged all around the world, especially in relation to free expression and freedom of the press, Internet content controls and internet blackouts and crackdown on human rights defenders are being more and more present in the digital space. And for Wikimedia projects, these infringements may impact on the rights to security of persons, the right to be free from torture, the right to privacy, to freedom of expression and uh, assembly. Um, in the government surveillance and censorship can take many forms, one of which is online surveillance of Wikimedia volunteers and readers, especially in countries with restricted internet freedoms or authoritarian governments, and on topics that are being considered taboo in those countries, for example, topics related to democracy or certain political persons that are in power, and editing information about those persons can be quite challenging. Another manifestation represents the requests for user data, including formal and informal government requests to the foundation. And another type of manifestations of the government surveillance is through government censorship that is ranging from blocking certain sections of articles to blocking access to Wikipedia as a whole. So taking into consideration these risks, uh, that I've been presenting until now, we want to focus on the good side of the things, how we can work together and how we can cooperate in order to promote human rights, especially in the CE region. And one of the main 
things that we can do together is to um, create and deploy training programs on human rights. We also want to create a network of organizations and human rights advocates. So if you are interested in this kind of topics, we can work together on creating training materials that will be tailored for your needs and interests. We also would like to do a regional peer community groups on human rights, where we will speak about these human rights challenges and what we can all do together in order to prevent them. And we are planning to develop awareness raising tools and programs to understand and mitigate human rights risks all across the Wikimedia project. I want to thank you very much for your attention today. And if you have some more questions about the topic of our presentation, or if you are interested in a cooperation, you can contact me on the email that is written here in the presentation. Thank you very much and looking forward to our discussion. Thank you. Uh, I see one raised hand uh, from among the participants from Anton. I don't know if this is the, <clears throat> if it's the same raised hand that you had from the last session or... Yes, um, there are not questions but comments uh, to the previous section. Yeah, please go ahead. <clears throat> so first uh, is the fact uh, that uh, Wikipedia is, has a very high trust uh, to itself. Uh, I often hear conversations of some people who say something like, oh, it doesn't sound right. It's impossible. It cannot be. But it's written on, on Wikipedia. Okay, then, then it's true. So even if uh, uh, there is written in Wikipedia that it's that uh, Earth is flat, uh, people will believe it. If there is a they source. They will believe anything that is written in Wikipedia. And we have um, a very high responsibility to uh, uphold this level to make sure that uh, everything that is written there is true because people are uh, believing this uh, unconditionally. Also, I want to remind you about the fact that Wikipedia uh, facts from Wikipedia articles are now appearing even in court resolutions. So it imposes on us even bigger responsibility for uh, truth. Uh, also, I want to uh, mention some insights uh, uh, from a uh, professional uh, PR person who had a presentation on Ukrainian Wiki conference a month ago. And uh, she told us that uh, if uh, some uh, PR professional wants to quickly push some information to be in the top uh, results of Google, Wikipedia is uh, very uh convenient uh, anything that appears uh, in wikipedia will immediately appear in top results in uh, google uh and uh, you sh uh, don't need to contact some uh, editors uh, some site administrators you can uh, edit yourself so they see it at, as very convenient uh, uh, tool and they use it uh, and uh, this is a challenge for us uh, also i want to mention that during elections uh, in uh, at least in Ukrainian Wikipedia, it uh, becomes a battleground because uh, all candidates, all political parties uh, see Wikipedia as, uh, uh, again, a very convenient uh, uh, field to spread their um, ag ag agitation and uh, uh, communities at that time have a very hard time uh, fighting it. They act just like firefighters. 
they extinguished mm. fire there and it appears again uh, there. Right. Thank you. I think, thank you, Anton. I think this is just the kind of thing that the disinformation team um, was set up to help with. Um, so thank you for your insightful comments. I look forward to hearing a little bit more about Ukrainian Wikipedia. I'll have a I'll have a comment for you, Nathan. Probably offline. I don't want to uh, use up the time of the session uh, about a recent thing. Um, Sergi, um, this is comment for, from me. Uh, Wikimedia Ukraine collaborates uh, with uh, two uh, media watchdogs uh, um, in Ukraine. Uh, um, um, there are. Uh, detector media and institute uh, of mass information uh, and uh, these organizations uh, uh, document organizations uh, we we helped with them uh, 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 several uh, trainings for our wiki community uh, about uh, misinformation disinformation about uh, uh, reliable researches uh, uh, in media, and um, uh, this is uh, um, our background. Our uh, what, what we what we doing uh, uh, to fight for, for the trust uh, in uh, Wikipedia, and uh, um, maybe this uh, uh, will be doing another uh, chapters. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, secondly, um, I uh, want to um, ask uh, um, Sandra about uh, how, how she uh, looks on uh, that problem that uh, for Eastern uh, Europe uh, countries uh, that uh, um, a very long time uh, were a part of uh, Russian Empire or uh, Soviet Union um, can uh, uh, can uh, um, how 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 um, can um, fight for uh, uh, trust uh, uh, of um, historical facts uh, because uh, Russian uh, propaganda and uh, Russian um, histori historians uh, uh, write uh, uh, own view on history and uh, um, um, and other countries, for example, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, um, Estonia, and others, uh, writes uh, its uh, own uh, uh, view on history. Mm, so, uh, how this uh, problem uh, will be uh, decided? Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Um, I think that maybe, actually, maybe Nathan will be more prepared to answer that uh, in terms of information from different sources, the one from Russia and the one from other countries in terms of their own truth about historical narratives or uh, historical events that happened in each one of these regions. Uh, definitely disinformation is a very big problem in uh, Eastern Europe, in Eastern partnership, uh, usually coming from a few certain sources uh, of disinformation. So I believe that here is also important, for example, as you mentioned, that you work with media organizations from Ukraine in order to maybe debunk some of these disinformations and to also promote another side of the story, for example, in terms of um, national historians that are writing about the some historical events that happened uh, in Ukraine or let's say in, uh, in other countries from the Eastern Partnership. Uh, because actually 
our work as human rights team is focusing more on the human rights side, not that much on content and information that appears on the uh, on the Wikimedia projects. So I will just ask Nathan if he has something to add uh, to this question in terms of uh, historical facts and how to hide from them or not. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sandra. I, I think that's a really good explanation of the way that the foundation kind of looks at these issues and um, one thing I return to time and again is the, the is thinking about reliable sources and how we judge what is and what isn't a reliable source I think that's the backbone of lots of editing um, and perhaps it, this even you know this can even address the question that's in the chat which is um, that the first part was mainly about Wikipedia but what about other projects um, especially Wikinews, but also Commons and Wikidata, I think is a really valid uh, question, actually. And I think um, my main reason for focusing really on, on Wikipedia so much um, was that the team is relatively new. The unit is relatively new. Um, it's, for perhaps obvious reasons, perhaps the biggest place, as Anton mentioned, um, the most Im important place for people pushing a certain point of view to add certain types of um, disinformation narratives. There are, of course, challenges that other projects uh, like Wikinews or Wikidata face. Um, and that's certainly something um, that I'm interested in as well. Um, so if anyone uh, would like to uh, collaborate on a, on a project, um, on any of those other projects as well, um, I'd be very interested to learn more, actually, because it's not an area that I, I know a massive amount. Um, so I can learn from you as well. Um, so thank you for the question. 